Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Here in Herefordshire, the brambles are starting to flower, which means it won't be that long before there are blackberries to forage. But at the end of June, it's a perfect time to be picking new shoots of bramble to make cordage with. It's a very versatile plant. Let's have a good look at some new growth and collect some to be making with. Brambles can put on a huge amount of growth in a season. It often seems, particularly in the garden, as if you can see them growing daily. But the important thing to look for are nice long shoots that have grown in one season. At the moment, those spines, which are so vicious later, are still quite soft. They'll prickle you if you stick your fingers down hard on them, but with gloves on, we're not going to have any trouble harvesting this. So choose yourself a lovely long, straight piece of soft bramble growth. Put some gloves on, get your knife or some secateurs, take it off as far back into the hedge or as near to the base as you can do and we'll have a go at processing it for fibre. So having picked our bramble, the first thing to do is identify where the fibres are. Like most cordage fibres, they lie in a thin layer between the outer bark, which is the bit with the prickles on, and this pale woody core. Now the first thing we need to do to get at them is to get rid of the side branches and all the prickles. And wearing gloves, this is very easy to do. I generally start at the top end. Sometimes you lose a little bit to start with. Look, that's it. But mostly, it's just a case of strip away, wearing gloves. Virtually all those prickles will come away. And so will the leaves. I generally then also but once in the opposite direction, just because that means I can feel if there are any really obvious prickly bits. And from there on in, I shouldn't need my gloves. I'll just lose those. My tools are the same as I used in the nettle video. I've got a fairly flexible, thin-bladed knife. If you're using a bushcraft knife, though, you may want to use the back of the blade rather than the front. I've got something to work against and I've got a small beater. This is just a wooden pestle from a pestle and mortar set. The first thing we need to do though is to get rid of that outer bark. It's still full of little tiny nobbles where the prickles were, but it's very thin. We don't need to remove very much. So just scraping very, very lightly, really light touch needed. It won't take very long at all just to whip away the very thinnest layer of bark, you really don't need to press hard. First said, if you're using a bushcraft knife, because they're so very sharp, try using the back of the blade instead. That will do just as good a job, but you're not risking cutting in to those delicate fibres. Now this section shouldn't take very long, probably a minute or two to do the entire bramble. If you get any areas that have very intensive thorns, they may take a little bit more. And as the season wears on, you may find that the bark is a little bit more papery, a little bit thicker. But it still won't take a great deal to remove that. See, this is coming off very, very nicely. Some of it had come away when I stripped the leaves off, so it's really not a thick layer at all. Keep that touch light. You're only removing the outer bark and the remains of the prickles. Nearly there. That should be that section. Just check over your bramble. If you think you've missed any sections, it'll only take a moment just to tidy that up. Preparation is the key if you want really fine cordage. If you're just trying to tie something together in a hurry in the woods, well, don't worry too much about the bark. But if you're trying to make cordage that's worth keeping for later, that's worth doing. 
Now the next thing to do is to remove this thin layer of fibre from the pith inside. That's where my little wooden beast comes in. Just work your way all the way along the stem. The top end will be very easy. As you get towards the base, that will be a little woodier. Bramble's quite short, some of them can be incredibly long. And there we are at the end of it. Now, if you've beaten hard enough along the length, the outer fibre layer should come off extremely easily. Now, just strip that away. And this is the section with the fibres in it. It's wonderful stuff. You get lovely, smooth, long ribbons. And you'll soon spot if there are any sections where you've missed removing the bark. I can see a little section there. So it's just the work of seconds to remove that. Now by itself, this is pretty strong stuff. This is what is used traditionally to um, lace together straw into, into, bas into skeps for beehives and it's certainly strong enough to use as a lashing for making a campsite. But like all fibres, if you want to make a really long lasting cord, split it down into ribbons, as many as it will conveniently go into. I'm going to aim for about a millimetre wide. They're beautifully long, and the more even you can get them, the more even your end cordage will be without you having to go to a huge amount of effort. So it's worth taking a few moments. As I said, I'm aiming for very roughly strips of a millimetre. Now, all cordage is best made with material that has dried out naturally and then, if necessarily, has been redampened. This allows any shrinkage to happen before you make your cordage, which means you won't get a loose twist to your cord later on. So having split your fibre down into a sensible bundle, this can now go away for a couple of hours to dry out. In fact, at this stage, you can store it for months, years even potentially, if you need to, which makes it a really nice project to do at this time of year, put by for cordage making in the winter.